What's up everyone, Bren here, and welcome back to another Gameplay Guy video. I'm really excited for this one because Phantom Assassin is one of my favorite heroes, and it's actually a hero that I used quite a bit when I did my run to 6k MMR, so hopefully I can give you guys some good insight. Also, I wanted to take some time to thank you all for your support. It really means so damn much to me when you guys leave feedback or questions. Uh, when I see comments that say that watching my videos has increased someone's win rate, overall play, or they just enjoy watching them, it just really makes me happy. So, to get this started, just in case for anyone that's new, in these videos I try to do my best to go demonstrate and discuss the ins and outs of playing a hero to take advantage of their skill sets. Venom Assassin, otherwise known as PA, is an agility hard carry with immense single target damage and mobility. She's very versatile, versatile in terms of what lane she can be sent to, and she's just really fun to play. Especially if you follow my style of PA, which relies a lot on aggression and controlling map resources as well. So right off the bat, I'm going for this rune. We kind of miss a fissure there, but at least it's a zoning fissure. So I will be able to get this uh, bounty rune. Um, but this game in particular, I noticed that they have a brood. And PA is one of the worst carries to lane against brood. Since she has no innate AoE ability to kill spiderlings. So whenever you run into these situations, you want to head either mid or to the offlane. Phantom Assassin's is actually really great at both, especially if you have a good support duo in the offlane, and in this case I'll be landing with our shaker up against probably anti-mage and a disruptor. Uh, for starting item build, there's two routes for styling Phantom Assassin. The route that I'm going for in this game is going to be a stout shield, three branches, and two tangos, and this will allow me to play really aggressively on top of creeps and negate a lot of the creep damage, because stout shield, stout shield even though it has been nerfed, it's still really great at tanking creeps. So what I can do is I can A-click him like I'm doing right now, I'm just A-clicking him out of the lane, and I'm not taking too much creep damage. And you might be wondering why uh, Disruptor isn't coming up to harass me, but the thing is, if Disruptor comes up, comes up and harasses me, uh, he doesn't know exactly where the Earthshaker is, so Earthshaker can get off a really clean fissure and probably block him off, and that would be actually the death of him, so Disruptor is actually making the smart play of doing pulling only, but uh, this, so the build I'm going for, it basically worked out. I have my shield, I've managed to play aggressively on him, kind of zone the AM back off the wave. And the other build that I recommend going for a lot of times, uh, especially if you are having a more difficult lane, is going to be starting with a ring of protection right here. And what the ring of protection will do, will allow you to do is build into a bassy ring. And a Bastion Ring obviously gives you really great mana, and since Stifling Dagger is such a low mana cost ability, it's just so effective on it. Obviously, static mana regen, regen items are more effective when it comes to uh, spells that have lower mana cost because it's a, it's a higher percentage of mana that you are actually regening for those skills. So Bastion Ring is really great on PA for the mana regen it provides. It allows you to spam Dagger against really difficult lanes and manage to get really good farm even against difficult lanes. So Bassy Ring is better against difficult lanes, in my opinion, and in lanes where you want to be really aggressively on the creep waves, I'd say go for a Stout Shield almost every time. But Disruptor does try and go play up on me. He gets a little bit impatient. He doesn't know, he never knew where the where Earthshaker was, but Earthshaker was waiting there the entire time. So really patient play by Earthshaker. Manages to get a pretty simple kill on the Disruptor, but just really solid patience coming out from uh, Earthshaker right there. So I'm just using my dagger again. I don't have any mana, but I use my dagger to get a little bit more damage on the anti-mage. So we managed to zone him off. My lane is going to be pushing either way, so might as well just help my creeps push it. Maybe be aggressive underneath the tower. Going for this auto attack. Managed to get it. Shepard uses his lightning bolt on me. Uh, as you guys can see, I'm 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 pretty uh, versatile or uh, mobile with this hero, especially since I have boots. This hero has high base movement speed so I can run in and out between the wave even under tower and get uh, denies in that's kind of what you want to be doing especially when you have these type of lanes uh, so I have my boots now though I still am sitting on a bunch of tangos doing my best to last it and as you guys see I did pick up a cooling blade and a cooling blade is really good uh, just for guaranteeing last hits but we, we have a fissure going out right here um, we don't manage to get him but we do zone him back he'll probably have to pop a lot of regen uh, uh, Anti-Mage blinks forward because the uh, lightning bolt is on Earthshaker. He manages to get him off, but I do have a dagger coming up. AM knows that. He's probably trying to juke him right here. But I, I cut the tree down immediately and then just got an auto-attack and a dagger in. He did not blink away. He could not blink away. So he tried to make the smart, the better play there, but um, just didn't end up working out, which obviously does happen sometimes. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to be going into... Uh, 
to phase boots right now because I really like phase boots. First of all, with the aggressive style of PA that I play, it's really good for just going in between lanes and farming uh, and allowing me to be aggressive in terms of my gank. So I can remain aggressive on the map without losing too much farm. Uh, Treads is going to be a lot better if you are playing a more farm-oriented PA. Um, and Treads is obviously going to be better if you're going for like a Battle Fury, which I will talk about. But for now, using my mobility for my phase boots to get in and out between these last sits, just abusing the fact that we kind of did decent in lane. And as you guys can see, even though we're doing decent in lane, uh, the rest of my team is actually losing pretty hard. Um, yeah, so our mid... Our mid Kunkka already has a death against the Bristleback, and uh, Brood is just shitting on bot lane. Brood is completely shitting on bot lane. Actually zoned our carry, Gyrocopter out of lane, doing a really good job bot. Um, but back to top. Um, we managed to get a pretty simple uh, Fissure there. Disruptor got caught out again, nothing really too special to show. Um, but yeah, I, I really like going phase boots, guys. And now the reason that I'm walking back right here, you might be wondering, like, okay, why are you walking back? You're full HP, you have tangos. Well, the thing is, I don't have mana, and Earthshaker, he needs levels. Earthshaker does need some levels and some basic farm. So I'm just going to let him have the, the lane to himself. I'm running back to base now. I'm going to be regening my mana to full so I can rem remain aggressive in the lane. And I'm going to be having my wand as well. So just made the decision to go back to base, even though I probably could have just stuck around and... Just played the last hit war. I basically deemed that it was worthy to just go back to base in that situation. Uh, porting back top. Uh, for skill build on this hero, nothing special. Always go for three points in Siphon Dagger, one in Phantom Strike, and one in Blur by level five. Just a standard build. I don't think there's anything that's going to change this ever. Uh, Siphon Dagger, it scales really well. It's very spammable in the early game. Uh, it's a great chasing ability. It's really great. Um, yeah, on to my discussion about phase boots as well. I really like phase boots as well, not only just for the ganking, but it synergizes with Phantom Strike, which gives you 130 attack speed for 4 attacks. And when you have a lot of attack speed, the way you want to maximize your DPS is by getting just raw damage. Uh, so phase boots does that. Um, treads, obviously, you aren't going to be using Blink Strike as much during the when you're killing creeps, until you get like a Battle Fury with your treads for the mana region, obviously. Um, but when you're playing an aggressive style like me, I really just go like going for the phase boots. Just so I can get that extra burst damage with my Phantom Strike for the four attacks where I have a lot of attack speed. So, playing the wave now. As you guys saw, um, there's a tri up here now. I got sent back by the Disruptor. He kind of saved me there. They probably could have killed me under the tower, even though I would have killed the Disruptor probably. Um, but Disruptor didn't want to die, I understand. <laughs> um... Yeah, I have my Bassy now, guys. It's a really great item on PAs. So I've kind of already been saying a lot. Just a really strong item on him, on her. Uh, have my wand. Just a battle build. I like going for this battle build on PA. Um, I very rarely get a battle fury. So we get another good fissure off on the disruptor. Every time disruptors come up into the lane, he has died from a fissure. It's just that easy to kill him uh, with this hero. Basically, every time he comes up, I can hit him with a dagger for some damage and some slow and every time he tries to trade on me he's going to probably be taking some creep aggro maybe I get one hit and then we get another fissure and then I use another dagger so it's really difficult for Disruptor to do anything in this lane really um, so kind of like the laning power of PA and Earthshaker like a really good example in this game um, alright so Moran is coming in now and we and uh, he didn't expect he did not expect the uh, Earthshaker to have enough mana I suppose but he has a soul ring uh, even without the soaring, he actually had enough mana, so, I don't know, just kind of a questionable play by Marana. Oh, Marana actually probably thought that I was going back to heal, uh, because he saw me uh, with low HP, and he saw me leave the, the lane for a little bit, but I didn't leave. Um, so I, I understand why the Marana played aggressively there, but um, he probably should have waited a little bit longer. But yeah, so I really like this setup. Definitely always max your Siphon Dagger. It, it has the possibility to crit, for anyone who doesn't know, for your coup de gras, uh, your ultimate, you, you can you can crit whenever you throw your dagger, so it does pure damage. It obviously does half damage to heroes. And now I'm going to do something that you always want to do against Disruptor. When you TP in, you want to actually run to the side so he cannot glimpse you back to the base. Uh, if, if I showed myself, he obviously would have got a glimpse on me, and I would be sitting I would be sitting in base right now. So just went out to the side. We're going to have a really good bolt coming up. Uh, good port from Kunkka. Kunkka, basically, he figured that, okay, I'm losing w mid way too hard. I can't really do too much there. And now he's just porting around, doing the smart thing. Uh, 
just trying to do something on the map. Um, as I've kind of been, as I mentioned earlier, Brood is kind of just destroying this game, um, but it shouldn't be sh too big of a deal. It, as long as I play my aggressive style correctly, uh, I should be able to create about the same amount of space as the Brood, and this hero still goes light game a lot stronger than a Brood Mother does uh, with crit. Phantom Strike, high agility gain. This hero just really has it all when it comes to late game. Uh, uh, Stifling Dagger remains a great ability as well in the late game because it's just such a great chasing ability. So all of her abilities really strong in the late game. Um, yeah, so the next item that I'm going to be going for, guys, is going to be a Helm of the Dominator. Um, you might kind of ask, like, okay, why why aren't you going to be going for like a Battle Fury? You're doing well. Um, like you're doing well enough that you can actually probably get away with the Battle Fury. I, I don't really like going Battle Fury on this hero because Battle Fury costs about the same amount as having a Helm of the Dominator and a Basher. So to me, the way that I play PA, I just value having the Basher and the Helm of the Dominator much more than having the Battle Fury. Because uh, essentially, you know, you get the, you get the extra farming power with the Battle Fury, but it doesn't allow you to limit the enemy's farm as much. If you, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, with the Helm of the Dominator and the Basher, I can actually limit the amount of farm that my that the opponents are getting because it'll allow me to be more aggressive in terms of my HP. Gives me a lot more fighting damage. I have the I have the stun from the Basher, so it'll allow me to create a larger differential on gold. So I'm I'm looking in mid. Uh, now I can't really help. I just TP top, but I am remaining aggressive on the AM. I know that they're that the enemies are sitting mid, so this is a really good time to play aggressively on AM. I use another dagger. I'm gonna be blink striking here. I'm like, fuck it, guys. I know that they're mid. I'll go, what can AM do? I'm zoning him off the wave. So you have to be looking around to basically see when can you play aggressive and when can you play passive. So um, if you don't like uh, do a lot of zooming around the map, I recommend that you do it. Um, I know people will kind of point that out to me. And I've kind of pointed out in my own videos. Always be looking around the map, guys. It's so important. Just zoom around, check items and everything. Uh, Mana pops his invis a little bit late, so I am managed to get a kill on him. Using my dagger. I want to be continuing my aggression on this guy. If I get a crit there, I might have been able to kill him, but no, I did not. Bristleback is playing really aggressively. Uh, I figured he... I guess he wanted to save AM, but he definitely did not need to go in that deep. Um, yeah. But I'm going for my helmet down in there, guys. As I've said, I you can go better for if you want, especially if you are playing the more one position style, which I'm not. I'm in the offlane, playing a very aggressive style of PA. So I like going for my Dominator, my Basher. Uh, I like to be able to create space for my team, essentially, and a, a larger gold differential between both me, my team, and the enemy team by limiting their farm and just creating that extra space so that our team has a much higher uh, a gold gold lead, essentially. So. That's my thought process for it, guys. Uh, if you have any thoughts on the matter, don't don't be afraid to uh, post them in the comment section. But anyways, on to the rest of this game. I'm pushing the tower. Um, I know I can be aggressive. I just saw them recently. Obviously, they were just up here. AM is up here. Um, but I'm actually completely fine, even if I die for this tower. I see the disruptor. Maybe I can be aggressive on him. Uh, he's fogging my dagger a little bit. But I do manage to get on him. If I get another crit, I can... Ah, I don't get him. Um... But yeah, so close kill. I managed to zone him back. He still has to go and heal. His glimpse is on cooldown, so that means I can play aggressively on him. Um, you don't always have to be getting the kills, guys. If you can bait out spells by being aggressive, especially long cooldown spells, like glimpse, it's pretty long. 32 seconds in the early game. Okay, and we have a battle going out right here. So they managed to get my Gyrocopter, who is the hard, uh, who is the, basically the uh, one position farmer in this on my team. So. Pretty rough game in that, right? The rest, like my entire team, is doing pretty badly, besides me and Earthshaker, because of the Broodmother, and because Bristleback did really good mid. Um, but we're going on the Marana here. We get a nice Kunkka gets off a pretty clean clee right there. Uh, so I poured in mid, guys. Uh, don't be afraid to get involved when you're playing on this hero. Always be getting involved, I'd say. Uh, whenever you can, whenever you feel like you can actually get kills. Obviously, don't TP. Uh, to bad fights where nothing you can't really get too much done, like you can't save anyone, or you can't get any actual kills or return kills. Now, I, I just bought out my basher, it's on the courier, sending it out. Um, gonna have my two basic items that I want. 
my bash arm and the helmet dominator. And this is kind of where I look to go for my next item. Um, the most common build in like pro games would probably be the, the BKB. But if you are doing so well that you think you can get away with it, I would say the, that a, an, an Abyssal Blade would be really sick because Abyssal Blade on this hero, you can basically just get solo kills on anyone. Um, obviously, I probably won't be able to get solo kills on the the uh, the Bristleback if he has his back turned to me when I jump on him. But still, I go on him aggressively in this situation. I man, I get arrowed, uh, really dumb death by me. I'm playing way too aggressively. Um, I got way too cocky there, and I get punished for it. And that's a shit ton of gold that goes away. 724 gold just to the Bristleback. Uh, both Marana and Disruptor probably got 200 to 300 gold each as well. So over a thousand gold in their favor. Huge swing. Uh, definitely don't make those kind of mistakes. Um, it's it's kind of hard in these type of games so when you when you do get ahead uh, to remain kind of calm. But it's something that you really just need to work on. Just build your patience up. Um, I try to be as patient and focused as not in my games as much as possible, but obviously I do make those mistakes just like everyone else. I am just pushing this tower. I am dead, so I cannot really do too much. But I do have my items now. I have my Basher, which is going to be insanely huge versus this Anti-Mage. And this Anti-Mage, he only has 986 HP, guys, and only 6 armor. If I get off one Bash, the chance of me getting off a crit as well is also very high. So if I can Blink Strike on him, get off a bash, and if I get off two regular attacks with my dagger and one crit, he will most likely die. So, really good item versus anti-mage as well. Um, I would say a, an alternative to the basher would actually be a Yasha, if you want to go for that build. Probably an SNY. Uh, I, I do not go for that this game because they have the AM. Um, in games where they have a, more bulky carries, uh, carries that you don't actually need a man fight as hard, um, so, for example, if they had another hero like Bristleback, maybe they had like a Centaur as like one of their cores, where I just wanted the extra HP, the extra chasing, and just the more bulkiness, then I would say go S and Y instead of the Basher. But because they actually have a few few carries in terms of Bristleback and you know, Marana Brood, uh, the Basher is going to be a better build this game, in my opinion at least. Uh, but S and Y is a very good item. So is Manta. Those are two alternatives that I would say are very good on Phantom Assassin. Uh, but Went for the bash route this game. It's been working out pretty good so far. Uh, I see AM top. I always want to be aggressive on him whenever I see him in lane, especially if I know where they were. And obviously, we just took that fight. I just took that fight mid. So I know they can't be too close to the area, so I can be aggressive in this case. He he kind of makes a mistake on his blink, but he manages to survive because of uh, good wand charge usage. So good play by AM right there. He's pushing this lane in. So even though I'm being really aggressive, I still have 95 CS, which is okay. I'm trying to maintain my efficiency whenever I'm not being aggressive on enemy heroes. So I'm going to push this right here. And then I'm going to go into the, the hard camp pretty soon right here. So maintaining my efficiency. I'm not just sitting around in the trees waiting for anything to happen. Uh, it's obviously one of the bigger mistakes I see that players make. They're just, they don't know when to fight and when to farm. And that will also be another video that I'm going to be making, guys. Uh, so stay, stay tuned for that. Uh, that should be released pretty soon, to be honest. Now, I'm going pretty aggressively on this Bristleback. Uh, basically got him out of the lane. I don't know exactly where the, the entirety of the team is, so I need to be a little bit careful. But I am continuing my pressure, just pushing out this lane. My team is actually bottom, completely struggling with, with the Brew Mother. Uh, this is kind of what Brew Mother does, guys. Um, he just creates so much space. You have to lay down so many sentry wards. Um, it, so it, it makes you lose use a lot of sentry wards. It means that your supports are doing a lot of time protecting your carry in your own jungle. So this hero is just really annoying, and this guy has played it pretty correctly. I don't. I guess this is a, this is a fine build. He actually went for Gemma Trusite as well to deward any sentries. So uh, it's, it's going to be a pretty tough game, even though I am dominating. So even though I am doing good, the rest of my team is doing pretty poor. So let's take a look back at me. What am I doing? What am I up to? So I'm maintaining my aggression. Uh, we have that fight going on bottom. Uh, they managed to get the brood there, so that's a really big pickoff. But just farming it up still. And as you guys can see, I'm not, I am not letting up my pressure on this anti-mage. 
I would say most players probably would have went bottom to help my team against the Brood. But I just don't value that. I don't think that's how you want to be playing this. If you get ahead like this on a mid lane or an off lane PA, or a safe lane PA that transitions into a roamer type of hero like I'm doing right now, you want to maintain your aggression on whoever you think is going to have the highest threat against you late game. And I feel like that threat is going to be the anti-mage. I'm, I'm not scared of the Broodmother or, the game, or late game. As long as my team can protect our, our, our barracks from falling earlier, early, and I can maintain my farming and just limiting the enemy team's farm, then I'm, I'm completely fine with, with Brood doing kind of whatever she wants as long as I am keeping the anti-mage down. That is my main priority, my main priority in this game. Like you need to be looking at what are the heroes in your game that are the priority that you need to be shutting down. In this game, it was the anti mage. So farming these neutrals. Going to go back to the easy camp, which I cleared. It's being efficient, but I do TP back because I don't have any mana. I'm going to. Pr I'm thinking about getting my abyssal blade. It would be a really good item, um, as I was kind of talking about before. BKB. Uh, is going to be really good as well. Uh, you can even go for an S and Y here, a Manta, if you feel like it's worthy, or if you feel like you can, you need it. Uh, but I feel like I'm so far ahead, and the, the, the enemy team doesn't really have enough magic damage or very strong disables that I need to actually get a an early BKB. So I go for this Abyssal Blade. Hopefully it pays off. Should pay off. So yeah, maintain my aggression. Not leaving this lane at all. As you guys can see, I'm just playing on their side of the map. So I'm going to be pushing in this lane now. Hitting these creeps down. I don't know exactly where they are, but I do have my Abyssal Blade. So if someone does... Sh so like, if they want to kill me, they need at least... They need probably more than two heroes at least. Otherwise, I'm going to get a return kill and probably survive. Uh, as you just saw, they, they took out Roshan. Not too big of a deal. I am standing around now because I expect that someone is going to TP. If someone TPs, I can probably get a quick pop and get out. Um, and I, I can do this because I know that if someone TPs into this tower, in order for someone else to also TP in for the tower, it, they're going to have a very long TP time. Uh, so I, I blink in. I, I'm hoping for a crit. I do not get a crit on AM there. So he ends up getting away. It's not a big deal. I do manage to zone him back. Maybe I force out some TPs from their supports as well to create some space for my team. Um, obviously, even if their supports TP'd, uh, my team is really, really struggling with this brood. They just ha kind of have to four man at the tower. Um, <laughs> he's just kind of having the time of the life, the time of his life. This brood mother, uh, bottom. But I do have my items up now, um, so it's kind of on me this game to to carry it, to carry it through. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be going for my BKB next probably because that's just the safest route. Um, I kind of have the items, all the items I need. I have the Abyssal Blade so that I can jump on someone, quickly burst them down, especially if I get a critical. Um, yeah, so all I really need is a BKB and I can go from target to target in the battle and basically just win the fight for my team. I'm TPing and now I want to help my team. I cannot help the gyro because he's stuck in the static storm, but I, I can do is so I can blink on the run. I'm using my abyssal blade just so he cannot leap away, and I'm going directly on disruptor. Disruptor is defenseless basically. Uh, gyro died. Maybe I get the kill on the bird mother, but he's running into his web. Don't have vision. Uh, Bristleback is extremely tanky. He's so, as I was talking about, he just kind of dominated mid against the Kunkka. Uh, he has a lot of decent amount of farm this stage of game, what does he have? He has a Vanguard, Talisman of Evasion, he almost has a Halberd and an Aegis. We are not getting this kill, so I'm backing the hell off that. Backing the hell off that Bristleback. Uh, just too big right now. Going back mid though, I'm just gonna farm. Not gonna go get mana. Uh, I wanna push, I wanna prioritize pushing this lane out over going for my, uh, going back to base, to the fountain, do my mana right away. But, see a regen, so this is really, this is really great that, uh, is here. But I get arrowed immediately to cancel a region. <laughs> so that's unfortunate. But not too big of a deal. I'm being really greedy right here. I went in obviously. I got baited by the Murano. Um I still kill a disruptor, but in the end, is it really worth it for a disruptor? 
I'm not really creating that much space. I didn't... They, they, they were already in the area. It's not like they had to walk over here and stop their farming. So in the end, I didn't really create too much space. All I did was trade myself for a disruptor. Uh, dumb death by me. Just not watching the map correctly and just being impatient right there. So as you guys can see, Bristleback actually has his uh, has his halberd up now, which is going to be really annoying for me if I do not go for BKB. So I really need the BKB now. Otherwise, if if I go for like a Yasha build at this point, um, and I jump in, I'm just going to get halberded. I'm going to get carried around. I won't be able to do anything. And I need to be the hero that actually does the damage because the enemy team uh, just has a good farm distribution on the heroes. They're a lot more farmed than my team. <clears throat> Our farm is mostly centered on me. So I need to be the one that actually can get in their face, do a lot of the brawling, maybe create some space for my Kunkka and my and my gyrocopter to sit in the back, get their damage their damage off. Uh, decent AA blast right there as we just saw. Going top now. From these neutrals. And there's a shadow blade on the on our Kunkka. That'll be a really nice item. Especially for the bristleback. Just for anyone that doesn't know. Uh, the new Silver Edge basically cancels most passives, which include Bristleback's pa a passive that uh, that lowers his damage when you hit him from the back or the side. So, really good item versus Bristleback, the Silver Edge. Definitely recommend it on a lot of heroes when you go against him. Um, yeah, just a solid item versus him. I am hiding now, though, because I do not know where the majority of their team is. I just got a glimpse of the Disruptor. Um... So yeah, I need to just be playing back. I know that chances of them actually finding me in here is really low. I'm going to eat through here. Maybe I can get a kill on someone. Uh, yeah. But I saw the Bristle back there now with the AM. Uh, yeah, Bristle back was hiding. The, the Disruptor is still there. So I actually just TP back right to this tower. Just so the f just so I can get this farm that's coming in. I do not want to walk through the lane. If I walk through the lane, the chances of me dying are extremely high. Uh, Bristle back still has his Aegis. He has his goo so he can chase me down. Uh, I do not have my BKB yet, so I'm just playing it safe. Um, yeah. And another I great item that I didn't really discuss, it's also a possibility in a lot of games, is going to be going for an early Satanic. Uh, it's kind of unconventional, but if you go for like a really big item, such as a Bissell Blade as your first item, you can actually go straight into a Satanic um, instead of going for like a BKB. Because what that will allow you to do is just have so much effective HP that you can actually jump in to teams with a lot of physical damage and use your high armor, your evasion, the satanic lifesteal, and create a lot of space for your team by being that brawler that your team needs with all the effective HP you're getting in. I'm going on the Bristleback. Um, get, just going to use my Abyssal Blade right there in the front, maybe get some crits off, but as I said, he has his Halberd, but I'm just cutting him around. I don't have detection though, so I can't kill him. I can't keep chasing. So I just had to back off. Drop my cooling blade finally. As you guys see, I dropped my cooling blade really late. I, I, ca I held on to it to maintain my farming efficiency. It's really important that you hold on to your cooling blade as long as possible. It, you'll really notice like jumps in in terms of your your creep score, guys. If you if you if you do that, um, don't like sell it at like minute eight or anything like that. Uh, if you need like space and you have to like think about selling like your quilling blade or your wand, I would say almost always just sell your wand. Um, obviously, there are a few cases where a few cases where you just have to do a lot of fighting and you want all the stat items and stuff like that you can hold on to. But um, yeah, I like holding onto my quilling blade for as long as possible. Usually. Just pushing this lane in now. I'm just creating a lot on these creeps. Uh, Disruptor's right here, but I blink strike on him and I get some crits. I got a dagger crit and just normal attack crit, so he he just gets popped right there. Not too much he can do. Uh, attacking this wave. Attacking this tower down. Attacking this tower down. Oh, and uh, just for anyone that doesn't know, um, blur pa the blur passive, uh, PA's passive, which gives evasion, uh, 20, 30, 40, 50% at every level, also makes you invisible on the minimap if a enemy is not in range is not 1600 in range. Um, 1600 units in range. If they are not, then they don't have vision of you. I was, you, got, you saw the good BKB come into play. I popped my BKB, so even though I was halberded, I was able to debuff that, and I was able to go on the bristleback, end up getting the kill on him. 
So pretty clean kill. Gotta jump to Ron as well. Why not? If I get a crit, if I got a crit there or a bash, he would have died. So I deemed that it was worthy. Uh, Disruptor has a blast on him, so he can't really play too aggressively. I know that. I'm just, but I'm still running back. And as you guys can kind of see, uh, this game is kind of like the story of like two giants. I'm pretty big, and Brood is pretty big. But we're like trading each other's farm and space creation for each other. Um, but I just deem it worthy for me as PA, who is the much harder carry compared to a Brood, that I, that I don't actually need to go down there to kill him, um, to help my team out. So I, as you guys can see, as I talked about before, I've just been on their side of the map, holding my aggression, stealing their jungle farm, as I'm doing right now. <clears throat> okay, and something else I want to be talking about, guys, is... Uh, Kind of the way that the DPS works, and kind of why you actually want to go for like this straight up damage on this hero and why it's so good. So obviously, Phantom Strike gives you a lot of attack speed, 130 attack speed for four attacks. This means that you want to have a lot of a lot of raw damage in the early game, so that when you do blink strike on someone, that you're able to use that attack speed to get off as much damage as possible, especially with a crit. So Abyssal Blade is great. Helm of the Dominator is pretty good. It gives you 20 damage. Phase is great. It gives you 24 damage. But there does come a point in your easier. damage calculation where you actually do want to go for attack speed, just so that even so, just so that when your Phantom Strike buff is not on, that you're still doing a bunch of damage. So that's why AC is a pretty common pickup in pro games as like a fourth or fifth item. Sometimes it's like a third item even. Um, AC is really great. Uh, Especially if you do not go for a Yasha oriented build. Uh, I'm going, I'm getting gone on right here, but I pop my BKB and I managed to crit the disruptor. Uh, he just gets popped right there. This hero is such a beast, it's so fun to play, as you guys can see right there. Uh, sometimes you just manage to get those crits off, and it's just kind of crazy. I have my team coming in, so I'm not too worried. I don't have too much damage. I get off another crit, I basically one shot that guy. Oh my god, I get off another crit, guys! So, pretty lucky with my crits this game. Really lucky right there, to be totally honest. We still would have won the fight regardless, but those are some pretty damn, uh, pretty damn lucky crits. <laughs> yeah, so this hero is really fun. Just a complete blast to play. Uh, it's a really beastly hero. She's really strong. Um, yeah. So, as I was talking about, uh, AC is really good because you get so much damage that eventually you do want your your, your normal attacks when you're not using your. Uh, Phantom Strike buff to actually be able to do high amounts of DPS, so you want attack speed from somewhere. AC is really great. Manta is good, but I, I think AC is almost always going to be the best option because it's just an aura item. Auras are great for 5 manning, great for going high ground. Uh, Manta is more of a selfish item. Uh, same with SNY. Uh, those are better mid-game mid items, so AC is really great in this situation. But you can go Manta as well if you want to. Manta is really great, guys. Uh, especially late game, it gives you a lot of uh, split put pr split push pressure. Um, your crit goes onto your illusions, and when you when it gets this late, you're high level, so you have a lot of stat points. Your illusions are very strong; they have evasion. It's a pretty good item. But I really do like this build. It's kind of I'd say more of my standard build. Uh, usually, I do go for something like a casual Yasha, though. Um, but I was, as I was saying, they have a lot of physical damage carries that I wanted to man fight. So Basher is really good in this case. An early Basher with my Dominator. I do have my full AC now. I have a bunch of armor. They really cannot kill me at this point. They do not have the magic damage. I go immediately on the Bristle back. I pop my BKB so he cannot use his his health as Halberd. He goes in Viz, but a really good, uh, really good Fissure by or Shaker Man just to kill the Bristle. I'm just popping target to target. Another crit right there, guys. Crazy hero. Sometimes, yeah, I, I'd say the, the biggest problem with this hero, honestly, is sometimes when it gets to late game engagements, you can go 10 attacks without getting a crit, and that will actually just straight up lose you the game. So, uh, this hero can backfire pretty hard some games. <laughs> Another crit, so I jump on him, I crit him, and he sends me back to help me out, kill this Rax. Um, yeah, this game is basically over, guys. I think we just end it soon, really soon here. Uh, thanks for watching. And as a again, thanks for the support, guys. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like it. Remember to subscribe if you would like to see more. I do make pretty regular content. Uh, see you guys later.